Jerry, good to see you again. Good to be here. Thanks for joining us on Health Connection. We got topical information. The FDA has approved two new medications for the use uh, in, uh, in weight reduction. Um, what are they and how do they work? Well, as you said, there are two new drugs that have just recently been approved by the FDA. The first one of them is a drug called Belvic. Uh, it is actually a new drug that works on serotonin. Serotonin is one of the neurotransmitters that we see in over, uh, overeating, obesity. We also see it in depression. If the brain does not have, if the brain is bathed in uh, serotonin, then it, it causes early satiety. People don't eat as much. The other drug, Cusemia, uh, is actually a combination of two old drugs, uh, fenteramine, which has been used for years as a drug that causes early satiety, and Topamax, which is an old seizure drug that also causes the body to feel like it is, uh, is full. Uh, Topamax is also used as a prophylactic medication for um, uh, migraine-type headaches. Uh, they found with a Belvic that it works about 70% uh, of the people will have at least uh, a 3 to 5% greater weight loss than individuals that are taking a, a placebo. On Cosemia, about 40% had a, a greater weight loss than with placebo. Who will be approved to take these drugs? Right now, it's, it's targeted for individuals with a BMI greater than, or a body mass index that's greater than 30. For a person that's 5 foot 8, that's a weight of about 200 pounds. Uh, if there are other comorbidities such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, that BMI level goes down to about 27. Okay. Who should not take these drugs? Well, pregnant females, first of all. Uh, individuals with the glaucoma who have been told that they have an overactive thyroid uh, or individuals who are on antidepressants that affect serotonin or other medications that affect serotonin should not take Belvic. Uh, for the individuals on casemia, um, in individuals that are pregnant naturally uh, and um, uh, ladies with uh, glaucoma or, or individuals with glaucoma or a hyperactive thyroid. There's risks and side effects to every medication. Are these medications, generally speaking, are they safe? The, the long-term effect of them is still not known. Uh, and define a long-term. Well, multi-year. Okay. Uh, you know, <clears throat> most most medications uh, that we give long-term are things for diabetes, for high blood pressure. These are going to be lifelong medications also for individuals to, to help control overall weight. Uh, there has been weight loss medications in the past. Uh, one of them is a drug called uh, uh, FinFin that caused valvular heart disease. Uh, one of the drugs in Cosimia, the fenteramine, was a part of the FinFin uh, legacy. It did not seem to cause problems, but they can also cause other uh, anxiety or other problems later on down the road. We don't know if Belvic itself is going to cause any long-term problems. Those are ongoing studies and we really won't know until they get multi-year data on them. We remember fen, -fen you know, fen mm -hmm. fenteramine and, and fenfluramine, I think, fenfluramine, you know, yes. two, the two drugs, and uh, they're, you know, it, they worked miraculously, it appeared, and then all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. And the FDA has been somewhat circumspect about approving new diet drugs. Why these? Well, in the past, the FDA has looked at diet drugs as being more of a vanity item, uh, that people wanted to lose weight. More and more, we're finding out that diseases such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol are also weight related. About 30% of the population now is overweight, and that number is going to increase exponentially as the overweight kids start becoming adults. And getting the weight off, we found that you know, a 10% um, drop in uh, uh, weight for someone with diabetes can decrease their overall need for medication and improve also overall glycemic control. The same with high blood pressure, the same with, uh, with cholesterol. Uh, so the FDA now is starting to target weight loss as a means of helping to control the, ex the explosion of these diseases. Now, as we talked about a minute ago, there have been some bad players that have occurred. FinFin was one of them, Meridia was another, that caused heart damage. So they've been very careful. Both of these drugs were before the FDA several years ago and were disapproved. They've come back in with more studies showing some of the efficacy of the drug and showing that they may at least be a little bit more tolerable. Uh, with every medication, though, there's a risk-benefit involved. Uh, you, you weigh the risk of the medication with the overall benefit of the drug. 
These drugs themselves, though, are not, they're not a panacea. They are not the silver bullet that's going to cause individuals to lose weight because they also have to have a diet, weight loss, and exercise program that goes along with them. One of the problems that people that did the FinFin regimen was the rebound. Mm -hmm. is, is that going to be the is it going to be the same issue with these drugs? If you go off these drugs, do you risk a, a weight rebound? In 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 all probability, yes. Uh, you know, we're made for famine. Uh, our bodies are made to be in an environment where there is not a lot of food that we have to scrounge for our food. We have to go out and hunt it. We have to kill it. We have to cook it. Well, we live in times of plenty, and our body says that famine is next around the road. So we continually try to lose weight. The other thing is, is that once we lose weight, the bodies are going, hmm, I'm getting too thin, so I need to start putting this weight back on again. That's the rebound. In order to lose weight, though, there has to be a lifestyle change of, of diet, exercise, and that has to be a continual program that is lifelong. Will these drugs be available in pharmacies soon, or are they, are they available, or if not, when will they be available? Probably won't be available until late this year or early next year. The FDA is still looking at Belvic as, as to how much of a controlled substance that it may be. Uh, Cosinamine is going to be a controlled, stub, uh, controlled substance because of the fenteramine element on there. Now, even once that they start hitting the pharmacies, the pharmacies are going to have to be specially trained for them. Uh, and then the, they're going to have to train the drug representatives and then train the providers on how to actually prescribe them. So it's probably going to be late next year, or excuse me, late this year, first part of next year before that they, uh, they will be on the market. And so uh, for somebody watching this uh, right now, we're talking about late 2012 or early 2013, just to keep the, the date reference current. If someone's considering asking their doctor, their health care provider for these drugs, what should they consider first? What, what, what should they take into consideration? Well, the, first of all, these drugs are one of the tools that health care providers have in the armament to help an individual lose weight. The other part of that is that the individual has to be ready to lose weight. Diet is a four-letter word, and most folks don't want to change. Uh, in order to prepare to lose weight, though, individuals have to be prepared for a lifestyle change, a reduction in overall calories, a modest increase in, uh, in exercise, overall changing the way that they have done things for, the rest, for their previous portions of their lives. And it has to be lifelong. It has to be lifelong. Very well. And these drugs are not going to be cheap either. Uh, right now they're targeted to look at, uh, you know, from 100 to $200 a month. Uh, for this, and those again are going to be lifelong drugs. Very well. Jerry, good to see you again, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's great to be here.